white matter hyperintensities are white dots or larger uh, areas of white matter change that are seen on MRI, and they show up as, as uh, white uh, spots. The current thinking is that they may be due to small vessel uh, changes or tissue changes in the myelin sheath within the brain. And so what's currently known is that the number of white matter hyperintensities are actually correlated with gait abnormalities. So in Parkinson's studies, um, it's been shown that white matter changes can be correlated with gait problems. The study was focused on the utility of imaging in mild traumatic brain injury. And so Dr. Shetty's group did a very nice job. Um, the key findings that they reported were that um, over four time points, um, starting from the acute phase of less than 72 hours to a chronic phase up to 97 days, they studied changes of white matter hyperintensities over time. The other two time points were subacute phase between five and 10 days and 12 and 16 days. And the reason that range was chosen is because the traditional concussion literature suggests that people make a recovery between seven and 14 days uh, after their injury period. So what was interesting was that they found that there were white matter hyperintensities, even in some of the younger participants, but that they did not correlate with clinical symptoms after the concussion. Other key finding was that these, the number of white matter hyperintensities were correlated with the number of balance errors um, as they recorded using something called the modified balance error scoring um, system, which is a uh, concussion tool to assess balance uh, after the injury. So the conclusion that we can draw is that, one, there's more study needed as to what is actually happening and why we're seeing these uh, white matter changes. But two, that routine MRI after a concussion um, is really not necessary because the most likely you're, you may find changes, but it's not going to have any correlation with any of the clinical symptoms that a patient is experiencing. Since this was a very large trial with hundreds of uh, individuals participating, I think it would be important to understand why these changes are occurring if there's a way to look at pre and post injury. So there are some studies where they're doing baseline MRIs and then if people get concussed then they've they will do follow on. So it might be interesting to see if there's any correlation between clinical balance problems and whether white matter hyperintensities do develop after injury. So it's possible that the injury is what caused these white matter changes, but it's hard to say right now because we don't have a causation. Um, obviously, animal studies could be useful um, if you believe that. Uh, animal research is uh, appropriate. Uh, obviously, people have their own opinions about that. Um, or examining other uh, potential cell models of uh, concussion injury um, in a, in a uh, laboratory setting.